Mike Zeno Ministries presents Called to Victory. Now here are your hosts, the senior pastors of Glory and Peace Church International, pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. You cannot stop the spirit of the living God when the spirit of God is loose in a nation, in a community. Nothing can stop it. We need the power of the Holy Ghost, not only in our churches, we need it in our cities, we need it in our country, we need it in our world again. Not political correctness. This Pentecost must be different for us. There's a reason God called us to this place to convocate at this time. Because he has a perfect plan, a perfect purpose for every one of us. You're not here by accident. I'm not here by accident. We are here by divine appointment. God wants to do something new for every one of us, for you and for your family. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Your future is being sanctified today. Glory be to God. I say your future is being sanctified today. The blessings of God will pursue after you and overtake you this day henceforth in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Every agenda of the enemy will be brought to naught. Because this day, in the first Pentecost when the Torah was given, was when God declared over Israel, you are a nation, you are free from Egypt. You are a nation, and these are the bylaws. On Pentecost, right there in the upper room, God reigned on his people and he birthed the church. It was a time of supernatural birthing. May God birth us as his church today in Jesus' mighty name. Not by our might, nor by our power, but by his spirit. They were there, all scared, afraid. <laughs> but he that is born of the spirit is like the wind. You don't know where it's coming, where it's going. And so on the day of Pentecost, there was a mighty rushing wind. God was saying, from this day, nobody, nobody, nobody can stop you. Hallelujah. 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 On the day of Pentecost, God knighted his sons and his daughters, and he sent them with power. Not just with an instruction, not just with an authority, but with power. Pentecost signified The beginnings of the establishment of the grace of God on his people where they could boldly say, I am a son of God. So what do you mean? For the word of God says, as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And that day was the beginning. Jesus was not there telling them to go do this and go do that. You throw you go over there. No, from that day, when the Spirit of God came, they were all led by the Spirit of God. Their sonship was established. 
May this day be the day that God establishes you as a son of the Most High God. Led by the Spirit. As many as believed in him, to them he gave the power, gave the power to become. We believe we gave, he gave us power to become. But when we got led, we were declared sons. And the Bible says, all creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. I say in Jesus' name, this is our hour, this is our time, this is our moment to be manifested. The world has been waiting for us. Now we must be manifested to the glory of the Most High God. Somebody shout hallelujah. There must be a manifestation. We are not going to hide in a room. We shall be heard. In every nation. Somebody shout hallelujah. Pentecost is about a harvest of fruitfulness. But how can we be fruitful? What makes us fruitful? Our Lord tells us in John chapter 15. In John 15. He said, I am the true vine. I am the true vine. By so he was saying, just by implication and application that there are vines that are not true. He says, and my father is the husbandman. He's the one that takes care of this plant. Goes on and says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. What? Every branch in me. He didn't say every branch attached to me. He said every branch in me. Is it possible to be in him and not bear fruit? That's what he said. That I can be in him and not bear fruit. Why would that happen? How can I be in him and not be fruitful? Hmm. What could possibly cause such a thing? He said, he take it away. He takes it away. Because God will not tolerate unfruitfulness. God will not tolerate unfruitfulness. It is not acceptable because it is not God-like. Put your hands on your head and say with me, Oh my God, I cannot 
be unfruitful. Unfruitfulness is not like you. I am created in your image and in your likeness. And if fruitfulness is like you, then unfruitfulness cannot be in my life. Therefore, this day, in the mighty name of Jesus, I declare every form of unfruitfulness to be eradicated out of my life. I must abide in you. I cannot be taken away from you. For outside of you, I am dead. Lord God, I want life. I must live. Therefore, I must be fruitful. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare now, I am fruitful. Supernaturally fruitful. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Every branch that beareth fruit, every branch that beareth fruit, that word bearing fruit has two aspects to it. Bearing means to produce fruit, but bearing also means to carry, to bear something, to carry. Every branch that carries fruit produces fruit and carries fruit. Those are two things that God calls us to. To be able to produce fruit and to carry fruit. You say, what do you mean by producing fruit and carrying fruit? When you carry fruit, you are seven. When you carry and you bear fruit, you are seven. You are helping to bear other people up. You are holding other people up. You are serving them. You are helping them to be whatever it is God wants them to be. Which means that you are not just there, just for yourself. What would you call a mother or a father that gives birth to children and isn't there to serve them? You call that person an absentee father, an absentee mother, or a, a, a child abuser, and whatever else. That's what we'll say. Would that be right or not? Well, when we lead people to Christ, we lead them to Christ and recognize that from that very moment, they are our responsibilities. I was saying to a friend of mine just the other day, I said, you know what? When we first had children, we thought, well, we have the children now, and then when they get up to 18 and they go to their homes, they are on their own. And I found out, no, if you're a father or a mother, you will always be a father and you will always be a mother. Whether they are 80, they are still your baby. Somebody listening? You're still responsible. He says, the people that bear fruit, he purged it. I was going through Napa Valley in California and, and also um, the, um, um, what do you call it, here in huh? um, Niagara. And they have grape vines. And they purged them. After they produced fruit, they were purged. They were cut back so that they can produce more fruit. Somebody told me a few years ago, he said, when you have tomato plants, if you want to have bigger fruit, you should go and nip off some of the flowers. That way, there's a concentration 
on the ones that you left alone, they, they, they produce bigger fruit. God does the same thing because God is about big. It's about fruitfulness. Fruitfulness is not just about abundance, it's about quality. He projected that it may bring forth more fruit. Verse 3. Now ye are what? Clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. That is important. He's talking about the vine and fruitfulness. And then he says, now you are clean through my word. The word I've spoken unto you. Because fruitfulness without cleanliness is not God's normal. God wants me clean. And he wants me fruitful. But he doesn't want me fruitful without being clean. So he said to the first right there in the book of Exodus 19, he says, clean up. Clean up. Get yourself clean. Then you can come. Sanctify yourself. Verse 4 says, Abide in me. This is fundamental. Abide in me and I in you. Oh, so this is the secret. Any branch that is in me that beareth not fruit. Now he says, abide in me. So we have that equation. And I in you. Oh, so that's the problem. The problem about not being fruitful is about us wanting to be with him, but not giving him the license to be in us. That's a problem. We want God and his blessings, but we don't want God to take rule and reign in our lives as individuals. That's too much power. I have to have control over my life. What I do, where I go, what I say, I, I have to have control. I, I have to have control. Well, if you want to have control, you cannot have the Holy Ghost come into your life and cause you to be fruitful. When they spoke in tongues, it says, as the Spirit gave them utterance. That's why you cannot teach people how to speak in tongues. See, yeah, just say, la, 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 ba, 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 shika, la, la, ba, 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 okay. Yeah. No, you got it, you got it, you got it. No, they don't got it, nothing. <laughs> Who taught them in the upper room? The Spirit of God gave them utterance. Nobody came to that room while I was kneeling down there and said, say, say, say it. No, 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 nobody told me that. I was speaking in tongues all by myself because the Spirit of God gave utterance. Abide in me and I in you as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Serve of itself. Produce of itself. Except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. And the way to abide in him is for him to abide in you. For if he does not abide in you, you get the snip, snip, snip all the way. Not partial, all the way to the stem. 
off. You caput. Is there anyone here today that will say, God, I don't just want to abide in you. I want you to abide in me. I don't just want to know you. I want you to know me completely. Every room, every crevice, everything, I'm giving you total license to enter any room, enter any place, do whatever it is you want to do because I totally belong to you. Therein lies the secret to what will change not only our lives, our families, but our world. Me abiding in him and him in me. This is total partnership. Total partnership. Locked in. I in you and you in me. Verse 5. I am the vine. You are the branches. That's important. Know who the boss is. He that abided in me and I in him, the same, the same, bringeth forth much fruit. We started out with more fruit. Now we've gone to what? Much fruit. For without me, you can do what? Nada. Nothing. You can produce nothing without me. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them. In other words, man will then have power over them. Oh, that's amazing. Man now has power over them, and man casts them into the fire, and they are what? Burned. Hmm. Verse 7. If ye abide in me and my words. Oh, so that's how he abides. With his words abiding in us. He says, you shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. This is the benefit. We abiding in him, his words abiding in us, staying with us. He says, when my words are in you, you get to ask. I've been praying. But God is not answering. I don't know why. Well, this is words abiding. Or you think it's a crime that's going to change God's mind? No. He says, if you abide in me and my words, Abide in you. Hmm. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. So that's how we let God abide in us. By his word. He just told us. Oh, so if I want God to abide in me, it must be that I embrace his words, believe it, receive it, embrace it, obey it. That's how he gets to abide in me. And when his words abide in me, I can now then ask what I will. 
Not what God wills, what I will. Because I'm going to ask it based on the knowledge of the fact that I know what his word is. I'm not going to ask God, oh God, help me to go rob the Bank of Montreal in Jesus' name. <laughs> you think God is going to answer that prayer? Come on, I'm, and I'm sure there are thieves that pray like that. <laughs> oh God, in this our endeavor today, let the cops not see us. <laughs> Crazy prayers that people pray. Hmm? Sounds funny. But people pray crazy prayers like that. Oh God, I love that man. I know he's married. Kill the wife so I can marry him. You say, you say people don't pray to God. Oh yeah, they pray those kind of prayers. What planet are you on? People pray all kinds of crazy prayers. Because the word of God does not abide in them. They are not praying based on the word of God. But when the word of God abides in you, then you get to ask what you will. And he says, and it shall be done unto you. Let's look at verse 8. Herein is my Father glorified. How? That ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. What? I get to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ because God is glorified because I'm bearing much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. Yes, yes. Huh. If you continue in my word, you get to know the truth. And the truth that you know makes you free. Wow. To receive a CD of today's program, send $10 to Mike Zeno Ministries, Post Office Box 3990, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R2W5H9. To order by Visa or MasterCard, call 204-582-6795. Request the program number on your screen. Thank you for watching Called to Victory with your hosts, Pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. This is a viewer-supported program. Thank you for your financial gifts. Call, write, or follow us online. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or watch us on our YouTube channel. This has been a Mike Zeno Ministries presentation.